Hello friends, you are watching a Rudire Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. Let's get started. Hello viewers. Today I'm going to show finite element analysis of a tap art bar using ANSYS mechanical epidural. And by the same time, we will validate these results. Initially, we will show the analysis using a tap art bar. Next to that, we will model this tap art bar into a step shaft and compare their results. Okay, so we are wasting time. Let us start our modeling. The tap bar is actually having cross section area at the left hand side equal to 1000 mm square, at the extreme right hand side, cross section area is 500 mm square. It is having material steel with modulus of elasticity 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square, and length of the bar equal to 375 mm. We are wasting time. Let us model this tap bar. Let us start modeling from here. It will be a structural analysis. Go to define the elements. Let us add the element. We are taking beam with three defined strain and element type reference number is one. Let us close it. Next to that, you have to provide material properties. It will come from material models structural, linear, elastic, and isotropic. That means material property will be same in all directions. Modulus of elasticity is 2 into 10 to 5 newton per millimeter square, that is 2E5, and presence ratio will be 0 0.3. Okay. Next to that, we have to provide sections. That is, with areas of left hand side and right hand side should be provided. Actually, we are having two different areas at left hand side and right hand side. Areas will be provided from left hand side onwards. Let us consider the left hand side area is equal to ID number 1 and let us put the name of this area equal to big area. As the cross section area at the left hand side is 1000 mm square, we can define this one as 50 by 20. Breadth will be 50 and height will be 20 mm. Applied. Now, at the extreme right hand side, you have to provide another area. Let us denote that ID number is 2 and name of that one will be small cross section area. And at the right hand side, area is 500 mm square, so we can define this one as 20 by 25. 20 mm is breadth and height is 25 mm. Okay, it's defined. Next to that, we have to create some area known as taper section to be created here by XYZ location, and we can rename this one as taper section. Taper section. It is starting with big cross section area from origin at zero zero location, and it will be ended with a small section at a distance of three seventy five millimeter. Let us clarify again. We are denoting one section by the name of tapered section, which is having ID number 3, and that section is initiated from left hand side with a big cross section area, initiated from origin and is ended at small section at a distance of 375 mm from the origin. This is done. Next to that, we have to create nodes. For modeling, we are starting with nodes and nodes will be created in active coordinate system. Total distance of this bar is equal to 375 mm. We have to create two elements and in between two elements, there will be three different nodes. First node will be created at origin. So apply, first node is made. Second node will be created at a distance of 187.5 mm. Applied and the last node will be created at a distance of 375 mm. Okay, so all the three nodes are defined. Now we have to connect all these nodes in the form of elements. And while connecting these things, we have to connect two different areas, right? That will be initiated from elements. 
left hand side is having big area and right hand side is having small area that will connected in the form of elements so you can select element attributes and you have to select that upper section we are having single material material id number is one and we are considering upper section okay next to that you have to connect all these nodes in the form of elements it will be started with auto numbered through nodes let us select node number one and two apply then node number two and three okay now our modeling is complete next to that you have to apply actual boundary conditions the boundary conditions will be applied from here load definitely it is a static structural analysis then we can define loads at different locations apply structural displacement at nodes left hand side should be fixed so at this location we are applying all degrees of freedom with zero displacement that means left hand side is fixed let us see that model we will be applying a load of 1000 newton at the extreme right location so we are applying force on nodes let us select number three okay and first we applied in the rotation of x is 1000 newton okay force is applied at node number three and the magnitude of force is 1000 newton everything's right next to that we have to solve this to be started from solution solve current ls if everything is right it will show solution is done solution is done so everything is perfect we can see our results from general post processing first of all we will see from plot results deform shape it will show deform plus undeformed shape that means when you see original shape of the tapered bar by the same time deform shape of the tapered bar by the application of force okay so we can see here the white portion is actually original structure and blue portion is the deformed structure by the application of force we can view this one as a 3d object from plot controls style size and shape and display of element should be on now for viewing this one we can change the orientation it will be isometric view you can see this is the tapered bar with left hand side area equal to 1000 mm square and right hand side area equal to 500 mm square okay we can see the deformation initially we see the displacement of different nodes then to plot nodal solution and d web solution from this one we want to see displacement vector sum let us see that it is showing that maximum displacement is occurring at node number 3 which is 0.002417 millimeter and minimum displacement is occurring at node number 1 right and in between we are having different nodes and different nodes are having different types of displacements right and the same thing you can see in the form of listing let us see list results model solution d web solution and displacement beta sum okay it is showing for three different nodes the displacement of node 1 is 0 displacement of node 2 equal to 0.1 into 10 to the power minus 2 millimeter and for displacement for node number 3 is 0.24735 into 10 to the power minus 2 millimeter so maximum displacement is occurring at node number 3 right Next to that, when you see stress is developed on different elements, we are having two different elements. On each element, you have to find out elemental stresses. Okay. For that, we have to create that elemental table that can be created from here. Element table, define table, and and we can define this one as stress. Can drag it to my sequence number and it will be ls element type reference number is one okay update and close 
now we can see elemental stresses for this step out bar plot elemental table let us see it it's showing that two different elements are having different types of stresses uh, second element is having maximum stress which is 1.5311 megapascal and first element is having minimum stress it is 1.10727 megapascal we can view these stresses in the form of listing results also let us see that list element table it is showing that we have two different elements and two different elements are having different types of stresses first element is having stress of 1.073 megapascal and second element is having stress of 1.5311 megapascal right excluding that one also we can find out reaction solution that means we want to find out reaction at the supports that can be viewed from list results reaction solution and we will see reaction for all items it is showing that at node number one reaction is minus 1000 newton right because only one node is applied at the extreme right side and then the support we are having minus 1000 newton okay as we have applied a force of 1000 newton and the extreme right side so reaction and the support will be definitely minus 1000 newton okay next to that we have to do the same analysis by using a tap out part and we want to see that both cases will be having similar results right so let us close this part we have to model the same object by using a tap out part again it will be a static structural analysis element to be added element type we are adding element type it is beam three final strain material properties to be added it will come from material models it is structural linear elastic and isotropic materials that means properties are same in all reactions modulus of elasticity is same it is 2e5 and Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3 Okay, let's close it. Next to that, we will select sections. New sections. Let us see the drawing and we can define those areas. Then we have converted this step right body into step shot. In that case, areas will be changed. For the bigger section, the cross section area will be 875 millimeter square, and for the smaller section, the A will be 625 mm square. So A75 can be converted as 35 by 25 mm and this one can be converted as 25 by 25 mm. Okay. Common sections. Let us consider section ID is 1 and we are turning this one as big and we can provide the size to be 35 by 25 mm. 35 will be width and 25 will be height. apply for the second one we can denote this one as id number is 2 and name of that section will be small section and as the a is 625 millimeter square we can define this one as 25 by 25 okay areas are defined Next to that, we have to model it. Modeling will be started with nodes. So create nodes in active coordinate system. First node will be created at origin. As the total distance is 375 millimeter, second node will be created at a distance of 187.5 millimeter. Applied. And the final node will be created at a distance of 375 millimeter. Okay, all the nodes are defined. Next to that, we have to add it with two different cross section areas. Right, it is a step shot. So we have to check the elemental properties, elements, 
elements attributes now we will be joining load number one and load number two and it will be having cross section here as a big cross section okay joining first node and second node applied okay next one will change the elemental attributes it will be having small cross section area okay then node number two and node number three to be added select two and three okay our modeling is complete next to that we have to apply our boundary conditions it will be started from nodes and apply structural displacement on nodes node number one will be fixed so we are applying this one as all degrees of freedom with zero displacement this one is fixed next to that we have to apply a load of 1000 newton at node number three force moment apply force on nodes select node number three okay and we have to apply a force of 1000 newton in the x direction in the positive direction of x okay force is applied everything's right next we have to solve it solution solve parentheses if everything is right it will show solution is done okay solution is done so everything is perfect we can see all this from general post processing general post processing plot results deform shapes then to plot nodal solution and we will see displacement vector sum it is showing that maximum displacement is occurring at node number 3 which is 0 0.2571 millimeter and minimum displacement is occurring at node number 1 where it is fixed okay next we are going to see stresses on each element because we are having two elements we are going to find out stresses for bigger cross-sectional uh, shaft and also for the smaller cross-section part to see the elemental stresses we have to form a table known as elemental table define table we have to add it and we can drag it to sequence number and it will be ls element type reference number one let us update and close it now we can find stresses for different elements of this step bar you can see that maximum stress for the second element it is 1.6 newton per millimeter square and for the first element it is 1.14 newton per millimeter square from this results it is clearly evident that in both the cases whenever it was a tapered bar and when we converted this one a steel bar in both cases we got similar type of results okay so this is all about our today's analysis this was a simple finite element analysis of a tapered bar and the same was validated it using a step shaft okay thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts please write to me thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye